In five days, runners and spectators by the thousands will be back on the old familiar course from Hoppington to Copley Square. And while the Boston Marathon has always been a source of inspiration this year, the time-honored tradition takes on new meaning as a symbol of resilience. The bombing victims also became unwitting symbols of that resilience, perhaps none more so than Jeff Bowman, whose picture in the aftermath of the attack captured the gravity of the situation before it had time to sink in. This snapshot of a severely injured man being rushed from the finish line is one of the defining images from the Boston Marathon bombings. It was how Jeff Bowman's family found out he was hurt. It gave them hope he was still alive, and it helped illustrate the bravery of bystanders who jumped into action that day. Since then, we've seen many other images of Jeff Bowman. Tremendous ovation for both of them. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Wow. Both through strikes. What a pitch by Jeff. Joining his sports heroes on the field and on the ice and at the State of the Union as the First Lady's honored guest. My life has changed. It's just going to be different. And while he's reluctantly become the public face of the Boston Strong mantra, that would hurt. I'm sorry. Privately, Bowman's endured painful procedures and grueling physical therapy. The 28-year-old is one of two bombing victims who required a double amputation. He's now learning to walk on prosthetics without the help of a cane and still struggles to sleep. I feel tremendously balanced. And while the past 12 months have been marked by tremendous ups and downs, Bowman is looking forward, leaving behind the year he became a victim of a crime and entering a new year. One where he'll become both a newlywed and a new father. Jeff Bowman is also a new author. His memoir, Stronger, was just released this month. And he joins me now. Welcome to you, Jeff Bowman. Thank you very much. So I read your open letter in the Herald the other day to everybody, to Bostonians, to first responders, to doctors and nurses. And it was a very simple, beautiful message. You said, thank you. Did you really feel like you hadn't said that enough or it, it hadn't been said enough? Um... Yeah, I really, I mean, I just wanted, because of the anniversary, I wanted to, you know, tell everybody how I felt and just get my gratitude out there. And I think that message did a, did a lot, and a lot of people came up to me, and, and a lot of first responders said mm -hmm. thank you. And, you know, I think it meant a lot for everybody, mm -hmm. including me, too. It was well done. So you had thought about walking the marathon route this year yeah. and decided against. You said it was just the healthiest thing for you. What do you mean? Uh, well, I'm walking around a lot now, but 26.2 miles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the Norton think... brothers only did a, little, a few miles yesterday, I think. Yeah, um, yeah, they're, they're really, I saw yeah. that, yeah. and they look really good doing <laughs> do. it. I yeah. mean, the weather kind of stunk. It yeah. started to rain, and it's not good <laughs> in prosthetics with the rain, but um, you know, I have, I get tired after walking a quarter mile. I'm really tired. So, you know, it's, it's just maybe one day I can walk that distance, mm -hmm. but definitely not after a year. I kind of realized that. You, you said you're pretty happy with these legs, though. Yeah, they're amazing. German made. German made. Yep. Autobach, it's a beautiful company. Mm -hmm. um, and the knees are particularly cool. Yeah, they are. They're. <laughs> They're like real legs. <laughs> they are. They look it too. Your book starts very dramatically with you're talking about the day and how beautiful it was. Your girlfriend Aaron was going to be running, and you and your friend Michelle, a couple others, were all down there. And you have this eerie moment where you went eye to eye with Tamerlan Zarnayev. Describe what happened. Oh, uh, we were sitting in the crowd, and everyone was watching the race and having fun taking pictures and it was a dense crowd it was a lot of people you know we were shoulder to shoulder and then like he's trying to cut through the crowd so he like bumps me and I turn around and I see him you know and we're right next to each other and I kind of was like what are you doing like there's nowhere to go mm -hmm. and you know he kind of you know like stared at me like with his bag and then I just ignored him I turned around and started to talk to Michelle and you know, I look back and he wasn't there anymore. And, um, you know, I saw a bag laying there and then I was like, Michelle, maybe we should go. And, you know, I kind of got scared for a little bit. And you did? Yeah, yeah. 
I felt, uh, I, I thought it was awkward. I thought it was just... Odd that he would drop odd, it there. Yeah, odd, like, why would someone just leave their bag there? And you said he didn't look like he was there to have a good time. Yeah, he wasn't. He, he was alone, and he just, you know, he's just looked kind of miserable. So how soon off after that did that bomb go off? I don't, like, no more than, like, two minutes. It was, it was really quick. Mm -hmm. And you're lying there, you look over, you see Michelle. She's yeah. got a bone popping through her leg. She's looking at you, seeing that you didn't have your legs, but you yeah. remained pretty clear, even, r even right at that second, what was going through your head? I was just, uh, I wanted to get away. It was hot, it, was, it smelled bad, and I just wanted to get away from the whole thing. So I was like trying to get up and move myself, and you know, I was staring at my injuries, and you know, I thought I was gonna die. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna make it. You so, could see your own flesh on the ground. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't good looking. At what point did, how long would you say it was before Carlos Arredondo came along? Um, instantaneous? Well, for me, it felt like 30 minutes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I guess it was, you know, just a couple minutes. Everyone, all the first responders and all the people that ran right to it, you know, that they were right there. It could have probably a minute. Did, did, a, um, did a wheelchair just happen to be there, or did he go get it? Uh, no, um, I think... De Devin had it, the, the tiny girl pushing me in the oh. photo. Yeah, so she was also, uh, I think she was a volunteer medic f at the fi in the finish line, and she was just running wheelchairs. I think mm -hmm. she was just ran a wheelchair over to see if anybody needed it, and, you know, wow. she was just right next to me, and Carlos was like, he's got to go, and he picked me up and threw me in the chair. Mm -hmm. And then she pushed me. <laughs> you said at one point, too, in the book, you said somebody, uh, somebody a first responder, a, a doctor, yeah. put his finger in your blood and put a C on your forehead for yeah, critical. Yeah, he did so. Yeah, well, he marked my forehead yeah. with, a, with, a, with a C or something. Like, I felt him do it, and I saw him do it, and I was like, wow. I didn't know what that was all about. But. I was very interested reading in your book about your reaction to the photograph, because everybody saw it, everybody was Instantly, it was on Twitter. It became, as we said, the face of, uh, you know, the tragedy, the trauma of that day. But people asked you how you felt about it. You, you saw the guy actually taking the picture. At that point, I was just like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Like, this is, this is absolutely crazy. Why isn't he helping? And I was kind of just focused on, mm -hmm. I didn't know where they were taking me. I had no idea. I was like, am I going in the medical tent? I'm not going to. And then all of a sudden, I go in the medical tent, and then I see ambulance. And I was like, oh, all right. I know what's going on. Yeah, but you, you said afterwards that you weren't upset with the photographer. He was like, he was doing his job. Yeah, oh yeah. He's mm. just there to take, uh, you know, take pictures and document everything. So when, when, when you came to after your, the first of many, many surgeries, um, you were very clear. And you had said something in one of the ambulances, too. I, I saw the guy. I know who did this. And, yeah. You know, they're just working on you. They're probably not even listening at that point. Exactly. But, you had much more extensive dealings with the FBI than I guess I realized at the time. I, knew, I know it was all written about, but they came in, they did sketches, yep. and you recounted the story of, of him. Did, did, did they seem, did, did they really seem to think you were onto something? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were outside my door the whole time. They never left my door. They always had a, a police detail outside my mm -hmm. door, and they didn't leave for a week, you know, until... Actually, you know, like that Friday, I think they took him off my door. They were there all night, never left. And, um, you know, I, at the time, I didn't know how much I did help or if I helped at all. But, you know, it turned out I, I, I did kind of set a, a guideline of what to look for the in the videos. The baseball camps, and yeah. you, did the, you did the sketch and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, and just what he was wearing, and yeah. you know, I, I didn't. And it, that it was a Jansport bag that remembered that. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was just you know, it looked like a Jansport. You yeah. know, growing up, I've yeah, sure. everyone, everyone had them, and mm -hmm. you know, it's it's just pretty crazy that mm -hmm. they got caught that quick, and I'm just happy it, it happened that they got caught that quick. Um, it it's horrible what amazing. happened to Officer Collier and. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, 
it's terrible that those kids would do something like that, but it's obviously something wrong upstairs. <laughs> You know, you've written in the book, and I know I've heard you say this other word, other ways. I mean, you certainly don't want to be the photograph that everybody remembers. Y yet you are. I mean, have you felt at any point that you're, you're you're almost a marketing tool, or has it been has it been uncomfortable in some respects that that's sort of the, you know it's it's, um, it's the memory that we all have, and I don't, that's what we I don't really. On. I try not to think about it. I mean, I have. I, I just, you know, people invite me to go places and I say <laughs> yes. Uh, I just want to, um, you know, capitalize on all my opportunities. And, you know, I, I'm just really grateful that I have, you know, all these, all this stuff and, you know, all these opportunities, like writing a book. And, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't want to do that at first, but then, you know, I talked to my mom and my dad mm -hmm. and, you know, they kind of pushed me towards it. They're like, you know, nobody really gets an opportunity to write a book. You know, there's not. Yeah, it's good, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it turned out really well. It did I, I, turn out well. I mean, it, it, was, it was really tough to do something like that mm -hmm. because I was so overwhelmed with everything that was going on in my life, just dealing with my new disability and, you know, trying to get healthy and then, you know, trying to live my life and... Then someone comes along. It's like, hey, we should, we should write a book. Mm. You guys, are you, are you interested, Jeff? We mm. could, we could put the, a project together and, and do it. And I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm already way too busy. I have PT four yeah, times yeah. a week at that point, and, you know, I have no time to myself to like heal. And so eventually, my parents and my family and they talked me mm. into it. And you know, I'm kind of glad I did it. Yeah, and it was good. So, Jeff, I, I've asked this to Roseanne, Sedoya, and a couple other people. I mean, do you have any interest in the trial? Do you want to go, do, even for a day? Yeah. Do you want to look the guy in the eye? I don't, I don't know if, I mean, I don't, cr I just want to go see um, a trial. I've never gone and mm -hmm. seen a trial mm -hmm. before. And, you know, this one relates to me yeah. or us as the survivors. And I kind of... Yeah, I kind of want to follow it. I'm definitely going to follow it, and I definitely I want to go see what it's about and go ch go there. Mm -hmm. So you excited? You're, you're getting married? You're gonna have a baby? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I'm very excited about that. Yeah. We're probably gonna get married next summer, and then the baby's due July 14th. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, see, it's just another thing that I'm like overwhelmed with. But and, that's yeah. a lot. <laughs> but it's just it's life, right? You gotta yeah. keep. Keep going. Mm. And you have. All right, Jeff Bowman, great to have you here. Oh, thank you very much. The book is great. Thanks so much.